industry scrutiny is getting greater and greater. Um, flavored, flavored products under pressure. I, the Europeans have already done it. The United States looks like it's going to do it as well. What does this, what does this mean in terms of your business? How big an impact is it going to have? Not what is happening in the United States, but this, this increasing regulatory tightness, particularly when it comes to flavors. Well, I mean, at first, uh, we don't sell combustible cigarettes as we know them in the U.S., so the conversations which is happening as we speak in the U.S. is really not impacting us. Second is we have our own experience from international markets, mainly European Union markets, where the ban on mental has been uh, introduced in May uh, 2020 last year. And, uh, you know, as uh, predicted, I have to admit, is majority of the smokers in absence of a mental product, they just stay with the non-mentholated combustible products. So I'd rather yeah. have the conversations about the role of the mental of flavors in the broader spectrum of all products which are in the marketplace. And we know that today you have a products which are based on a combustion and the products which are avoiding the combustion. And some products like in the US authorized by FDA, mm -hmm. for example, our heat not burn icos with a two mental variants where the whole toxicity and the impact on the smokers' uh, health has been assessed and the product has been authorized for commercializations in, the, yeah. in, in this market. So I think we need to look at the, how do we try to solve the problem now, knowing that the technology and science exist, by completely put the combustible cigarettes behind us and a focus on so, something which is vastly better yeah, alternative than containing smoking, yes? Yeah, check. I mean, that's something that you guys have set that goal of securing 50% of your net revenues from the smoke-free products by the end of 2025. What is that going to be? So I used to be a smoker. If I can get the same kind of effect without actually smoking, that would be awesome. What can I go buy in the next three years? Well, if you are a smoker, the best thing what you should do, to be very frank with everyone, you should quit smoking. But we also you know, we have to recognize that the many people just don't quit smoking. And these are the alternative products which were significantly, significantly the exposure to the toxic substances. So I believe switching to this product is the best alternative solutions which we can offer today. This is all well grounded in a harm reduction principles or strategy. Well, by the way, articulated yeah. by FDA some years ago for the U.S. market. Uh, and the, the U.S. is also potentially... Yeah, yeah, think the U.S. is also potentially pushing for significantly lower nicotine levels. You've talked about a post-nicotine product lineup. Can you tell mm -hmm. me what a post-nicotine product looks like? Can you just give me an idea? How is it going to work? What am I going to use it for? How am I going to be... How am I going to using that product? Is it going to be at home? Is it going to be socially? Just, can you just kind of walk me through and be specific yeah. about what those plans look like? Sure, but, you know, I think uh, we today discuss about a little bit of a sort of a piecemeal approach, like, you know, the idea about the reducing the nicotine in a, in a cigarette product. I mean, first of all, um, we have to be very cl clear, it's not the nicotine, which is the prime cause of a harm created by smoking. It's all the other substances which you have in a tobacco smoke once you burn it, when you combust, combust mm -hmm. it. I believe if we go with the regulations as they are discussed today, right, it's all discussions, that we will talk about the nicotine reductions in uh, cigarettes, consumers uh, will uh, uh, assume that because nicotine is reduced, the products might be better, which is completely wrong directions when we wanted to educate and uh, inform the consumer. So mm -hmm. that's the one thing which has to be taken into consideration. Second thing is... Uh, uh, there is obviously the risk that some people, I mean, it would have to be researched, will just start compensating. And that means essentially that they will, you know, inhale more tar in order to search for the missing uh, nicotine in a product. Obviously, this has to be established, re researched, etc. But that's the risk, which, you know, definitely has to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, to at least discussed and, and uh, considered. And again, I think today, in you know, places like US with FDA, very strong regulatory framework, that the one hand we want to do something about the combustible yeah. time and that's the high time but on the other hand pave the way for innovative scientifically substantiated yeah, product that's the way to go oh uh, yeah check we have like not a lot of time 30 seconds am i going to be smoking cloves at any point here chamomile is that the future 
No, we actually think that we can uh, use the capability which we build around the uh, scientific substantiations, clinical development, and add the completely new line of the products to Philip Morris, which have nothing to do with the tobacco and the nicotine, as our target is to generate the first billion of revenues from this completely new products, which, as I said, have nothing to do with the smokers, tobacco, and nicotine.